So right now, we're obviously having a play biting episode. She's really, ouch! What is it with you puppies always trying to get my shoes? I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Today, I'm hoping to make some progress on fetch, maybe with the Frisbee with this beautiful young lady. Let's see what we've got in our pup box here. For those of you that don't know, Pup Box is a monthly box that you get where they send you toys and supplies based on your dog's specific age so that you know what you should be working on with your dog. You get this really detailed training guide, both front and back. You'll find that they immediately get interested in these toys. I mean, look at this. And so you can see how she went from relatively subdued to, oh my gosh, that's amazing right there. And it matches you too. I love that. You don't just get toys with Pup Box. You also get really useful things like this water bottle right here. Check this out. You can actually pour water into it by squeezing it. So you always have water with you on the go. Really useful thing to have with you. And you get really good quality chews. I mean, you can see that's some part of an animal, but dogs definitely love it. So that's something she can gnaw on as she's going through the teething phase here. What I love about this toy right here, you have this kind of jelly rubbery type texture, which a lot of dogs really like to sink their teeth into. And then you have this classic nylon rope texture. It's a really great way to keep a toy multi-dimensional and keep a dog interested. Pup Box puts a ton of thought into the type of toys that they include in their boxes. They're toys that are really designed to keep a dog interested and engaged. We also have some great treats, so I'll be using these to train Kona as well. You can't have too many treats around the house. All of you can get 50% off of your first Pup Box when you sign up for a multi-month subscription. Just go to pupbox.com slash Zach and enter discount code Zach. I'll have the details in the description. Remember, Kona is going to be a big dog, so I want to make it a huge priority to keep any unwanted jumping at bay. Right now, this is pretty good. By the way, this is the tie out we have her on with her potty pads over here if she needs to go, but we're being as proactive as possible. Whenever Kona shows non-jumping behavior at mealtime, I want her to know that I like that. So what happens if we walk over here? Yes. Oh, so right there she jumped, still a lot better, but nonetheless, we wanna make sure that we give her some obvious communication. In that case, it was, oh, the food goes away, I go away, you don't get what you want. But you can kind of see in her eyes right here, she's starting to really understand, okay, I guess I better be good if I wanna get that food. I'm just giving her one or two kibbles at a time here for this. But it's when I go into motion that she tends to get excited, as you saw a moment ago. So let me continue to walk back and forth here. Yes. I'm gonna continue to reward her when she's being compliant. When I say yes, I'm following it up with something good. Yes, very good. I'll give her a little extra for the sit. I like that. Kona, come. Nice job, sit. Yes. Good girl, what's up? Hey, Kona. Hey, what's going on? Yes. The logic here is if she'll behave while I get even more exciting, then that tells me we're really making progress. I mean, you can see this is night and day. Kona, come here, sweetheart. Ah, she's really learning, isn't she? What a brilliant young lady, yes. Another thing we've been continuing to work on is preventing resource guarding with Kona. You'll, uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, you were just doing so well. Let me give her a second to think. Yes. Sometimes you just gotta let your dog think it through. Uh -uh. Good girl, yes. She's like, I want the bowl. <laughs> Resource guarding is where dogs tend to protect things, especially food, bones, toys, things that they really value. I really want her to be comfortable and at ease when human hands are near her bowl. So here, just letting her eat out of the bowl. Good girl. Yes. There you go. Being able to put my hand in the bowl like that. And then give her some. 
We're just trying to show her that, hey, just because hands are over here doesn't mean you're not gonna get fed. Yes. Sometimes human some hands more. feed you. This is a way that we've been using mealtime to try and get some extra benefit. She's obviously highly motivated at mealtime, so it's a good time to work on basic behaviors like not jumping all over people. And so we'll wanna build on this as she encounters guests or other exciting situations. We'll want her to tap into these past experiences she's had when she's had to hold her sit or her down when in an excited state of mind. Hey, good girl, that's your whole meal. Kona and Inertia have actually been sharing their water bowl and everything, which is really good. It's been nice to see that so far she's shown a complete willingness to be tolerant and to share stuff that she really values with other dogs and people. That's what we want. By the way, if you are struggling with resource guarding, jumping, or any other number of problems, check out my books. This one's very detailed on training. And then Dog Training Revolution is really detailed on overall dog raising advice, including a lot of training too. I'll have links to both of these in the description below. So I talked about a little while ago how we have the tether here as a way to control her, yet still give her some level of freedom out here in the main part of the house. Over the crate, for example, this is another way that we contain her. She's been sleeping here overnight. Obviously, this is all going towards a specific goal of being able to have her just be good and exist within the house without being controlled at all at some point here. But I do wanna give you an update on crate training because you might remember in early episodes, I told you how it was important to get your dog to be accepting and to really enjoy being in the crate. So I wanna show you where we are on that. All right. Ooh, I bet you're gonna like these little duckies. Come here. Can you give me a sit? Thank you. Yes. Okay, good job. So at no point am I forcing Kona to go in the crate at all. I mean. Every time I come up to the crate so far, I've been throwing treats in there to get her to voluntarily go in and out. Kona, come on. Good job. And then go back in. So you can see she's very willingly going in there. And then if I wanted to close the gate, I could do so like this. And I could say, Kona, can you sit? Good job. You're seeing no real obvious signs of stress or hating the fact that she's in there. She seems to enjoy it pretty well. Can you lie down? Yes, just let them think about it in those instances. Good girl. I don't want her rushing out of that gate. That's because we don't want her rushing out. You never know what's going on out here. Maybe it's not appropriate to rush out of the crate. Okay, good job. So you can see she's really showing the willingness to stay in the crate until I give her permission to come out. And when I tell you I've never forced her in here, I'm talking about 0% of the time. Once you do that, it's not that your dog won't be able to recover. You'll be able to eventually get them to go involuntarily if you've already made that mistake. It's a common one. Um, but if you can just have the discipline to have treats available so that every time it's time to go in the crate, you're prepared to take a second to encourage them to go in. You know, you can even use their food or their kibble, of course, whatever it takes to get them to go in there. Go close, make sure she's comfortable and wait. How about that stay, huh? Looking really good. Okay, come on, girl. Kona, what's this? Hey, Kona, I got a treat right here, you know. Good job, girl. Nice, so that's an update on crate training. All this is going really well. Today's day 12 of having her, and you can see she's really starting to come around on a ton of her basics. It's amazing what a dog can learn in such a short period of time, isn't it? So I just got a question, actually, right as we're shooting that I think is worthy of addressing right now. Someone asked me if I was against board in trains. That's where a dog trainer takes on a dog, tries to get them trained for their new family and so on. Kind of what we're doing here with Kona. I'm definitely not against boarding trains. What I am against though, is people dropping their dog off to a dog trainer and hoping that that's gonna fix the dog and now the dog is programmed and will be robotic and well-behaved for eternity. I mean, I think that's the impression a lot of people have when they drop their dog off for a few weeks with a dog trainer. You're still gonna have to put in the work with your dog. Maybe the trainer got you started and got things going, but there's still a lot of work to do. And that's true with Kona too. I mean, she'll learn this stuff, but if for some reason her family started just shoving her in the crate when they were frustrated, which they wouldn't do, I know them well, she would very likely start to have a relapse and be like, I don't know about that. If they weren't consistent 
about working with her on her basics, like sit down and stay and being very consistent about taking her out with potty training. We could expect relapses completely on everything. So no magic answer. Board and trains can be good, but just have realistic expectations should you ever decide to do that. Really good question from Instagram. Make sure you guys are following us over there. Now, toothbrushing, that can be the nemesis of many dogs. I don't think Kona's too used to toothbrushing right now. She's obviously in a good mood. I wanna keep it that way. Though I think she thinks this is a toy, which it is not, this is not a toy. This is to keep your teeth clean. It's a good idea to brush your dog's teeth as often as you reasonably can. Once a day is ideal. So she seems pretty comfortable with it. That, that much I'm happy of. Now, we have to get her happy with me touching her gums there. We've been working a little bit on that because we want to be able to expose those teeth so that we can brush them at some point. And again, for this training lesson, I'm not even focused on actually brushing her teeth as much as I am just getting her comfortable with a brush, but we'll see how far we get. Yes, good, right there. She let me lift up that gum. I like that a lot. So, see that? Yes, good, I like that. Not pushing her, I'm going really slow here. Oops, a little, yes, back it away a little, but let's keep it upbeat there. Yes, good girl. I mean, this is good, the way she's reacting right now. Yes, she's reacting so well, you guys. Notice I'm not pushing her to failure. I'm not just like going and going. I'm just really trying to get in a couple here, a couple there. Yes, good. If you notice your dog is pulling away a lot, that probably means you're moving too fast for this exercise. Let's try the rear teeth and see what happens. Yeah, wow, did you hear that? It was like stroke, stroke, stroke. Pretty awesome. Stick with the back here. This is the kind of thing you build on. You spend 30 seconds a minute at a time doing this over the first few weeks you have a dog, really ease them into it. It is well worth taking your time to get them used to toothbrushing and we want them to enjoy it as Kona seems to be doing. So right now we're obviously having a play biting episode. She was really, ouch, feeling eager. Look at that. I mean, ouch, she's into it. Um, but we want to discourage oh. that. I definitely, young lady. And I mean, she just wants to play. She doesn't understand that this can be painful. What is it with you puppies always trying to get my shoes? So remember with play biting, we have a couple of choices. So in this, case I'm going to ask her to do something incompatible with biting, doing a down stay. Because really when your dog is biting you like that, they're really just saying, I wanna play, I wanna interact, let's do something. You're being boring. That's why it's important to try to engage them. Now you can't always do that. And when you can't engage them, you're like, look, you got too much energy. It's time to put you up. You can go right in there, goodbye. Of course, you don't wanna do that as your default method because It'll just get worse over time if your dog isn't getting lots of attention and training. Wait. Okay, good girl, and sit. Lie down. Good, stay. And stay, leave it. Look at me. Yes. Good job. That's just a mini example of dealing with play biting. Another thing you could do is you could say, all right, you wanna bite? I'll give you something to bite on and break out that toy and use that to keep them engaged. Maybe use that to refine your tug and let go. But I should say, you know, it's okay for dogs to mouth and be a little bitey. The main thing we wanna teach them at this age is not to break our skin and not to bite so hard that it hurts. I mean, they have to know the proper pressure with which to bite. So you may even wanna consider while they're being a puppy, when they are biting soft or when they're licking, be tolerant of that. And in fact, maybe encourage it just a little bit so that they understand that, okay, you can use your mouth like that, but you can't use it to chomp down. You definitely have to be consistent on this one for many weeks. Your idea is to slowly reduce it over time, not eliminate it all at once. In short though, you have three ways to deal with puppy biting. You can transition into a training session by breaking out the treats, asking them to do something incompatible with biting. You can break out a toy, encourage them to bite, but bite on the correct thing and make a game of it. Perhaps get them extra stimulated mentally and physically. Or if you just don't have time at that particular moment, you can put them up in their crate or other area where they're comfortable and just have them take a time out for about a minute or two, then bring them back out and resume. So that's all there is to it. Okay, you're not gonna bite me anymore, right, Kona? Ow! 
The last time we introduced the brush to her, we were really methodical. We do a gentle stroke like that, give her a treat, let her smell it, know what it's about. So we can also maybe let her nibble on these. Look at that. Look at this. Yes. So here I've got a treat in my hand and that's keeping her kind of stationary and she's reacting really well to the brushing here. Look at that, look at that beautiful hair of hers. Let's get that head. She's even doing well with her head and her ears. Look at that. So she's adjusting very well. Let's get those paws. Look at these paws. Get those tail feathers. Look at that skinny little tail. There's no hair on that tail. There's nothing to brush. So she's doing really well in brushing and that's an update on that. I mean, Kona is doing so well today, so I don't know why we shouldn't keep going. This is a Dremel right here. This is to trim her nails and this can freak a lot of dogs out. So we want to do our best to be careful. So I'm going to hold it at a distance and then turn it off. It was only on for just a quick second. We don't want her to have time to be like, oh my gosh, that thing's crazy. We want her to hear, oh, that went on. I got a treat. Cool. Look at that, <laughs> yes, good girl. What is that? Girl, nice job. And now we don't just wanna turn it on and trim her nails. Remember, we wanna make sure she's comfortable with her feet being touched. We've been working on that a little bit, so she's quite comfortable with that. So then we want her comfortable with us touching it to her feet. And there's a nail, so we're just trying to work up to it. And we would just touch it right there. Good girl, yes. Gonna put it on low now. So she doesn't appear scared of it or anything. That's good. Can you lie down? Kona. Sit. Lie down. Yes, she got a little weird there. So let me go ahead and keep things low key. And hey, come here, can you sit? Lie down? Yes. Weird. Uh-oh. <laughs> that thing is weird, huh? Come here. Then turn it off. She's getting a little apprehensive. It's normal. So when your dog acts like that, we'll just take a step back. Sit. Lie down? Yes. Reward for something easy like lie down. Do that. Here you go. Yes, so that time she didn't back away. So we're regaining that trust a little. Yes. I wanna try something a little bit different since she's getting a little, <laughs> a little apprehensive. She likes the chew that came with her pup box here. So let me see something, sit. Stay. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. So that's a good place to stop right there. But I thought that by giving her something that was really likely to keep her attention there, it might make the process a little smoother. I'm happy to get a really good example of trimming one or two nails there. And with your own dog, don't be in a hurry at all. There's no rush to get their nails done immediately or anything. It's important to really get them comfortable with it. Because if you just go out of your way to get your dog comfortable with something, they're a lot more likely to be tolerant of it lifelong. Try to keep your mind focused on the big picture when you're raising a puppy. Well, it's been a minute since we have done a check-in on Kona's fetch abilities. So I think we should check in and see how she's doing on that and see if we can troubleshoot, see if we're encountering any issues and hopefully improve her overall fetch game. Remember the first step of teaching fetch is tug of war. We talked about that before with her. So ideally you wanna teach this whole game of fetch in reverse. So it starts with tug of war, really getting them into it. Then let go. The way we teach let go is by simply making the toy boring, yes. Good, and then we get all excited again, and then throw it, and then run from them to get them to chase us. Come on, girl, here we go. And then once they get back to you, repeat the process. Let them know, hey, this is fun. Good tug. All right, let go. Yes, go. Perfect. Good girl. So you can see how wild she is. I mean, fetch is a great way to curb a lot of hyperactive behaviors and her tug is looking good. Can you let go? Still struggling a bit with let go. Yes, good, ready? Go get it. 
gonna toss the toy. Good girl, come on. Good girl, and see how she's running back to me? Dogs really like tug. I mean, you can use it as a reward and to keep the game very exciting. Don't think of tug of war as your dog trying to keep something from you. This is a gratifying game. They're happy to let go as long as you go through the effort of teaching them to let go. So over time, you're really teaching your dog that when they let go during a game of tug of war, that the fun game continues on. I mean, think about it. A lot of people just assume you should throw the toy first and then hope your dog just kind of figures out that they're supposed to pick it up and bring it back. But as you you can see that doesn't go so well all the time. So that's why it's important to teach your dog to play tug of war and let go and then maybe fetch at really short distances. Fetch is a really good way to satisfy your dog mentally and physically. So that's why you see us doing it so often in these videos. And take your time, understand a perfect fluid game of fetch can take a little while to perfect anywhere between a few weeks and a few months, depending on how serious you are about training it, how often you can get to training. So at first she was a little reluctant. Now she's really coming around. Nice work. Fetch is looking great. Look at that run. Our pup box came in very handy today. Get 50% off of your first pup box when you sign up for a three, six or 12 month subscription at pupbox.com slash Zach. Use my special code Zach too. I'll have a link below. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and get both of my books. All of those links will be in the description. And we can't wait to see you in the next episode where Kona is definitely not gonna bite me one time and she's gonna be perfect from here on out. Guaranteed.